Wow, that's incredible. That's incredible. How much you guys believe in for encounters? Let's, 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 let's declare that. Father, Lord, we just thank you right now, God, for allowing our hearts to hunger for more, more of you, God. And I pray right now, God, that you will cause every one of us, as we cry out to you, God, for more, that you will cause every one of us, God, to encounter you in ways that would just blow our minds, in ways that would leave us speechless. In the name of Jesus, we have thank you for doing it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Let's thank God for doing that. Amen. He's going, he's going to encounter us. Amen. Oh, that was awesome. That was awesome. Actually, up to last night, I was having some of that pain in my shoulder. And right now, I'm not having any pain. So, amen. Oh, amen. None at all. That was incredible. So, I want to continue on... Our topic of hearing God. You guys been enjoying the series on hearing God? Amen. I believe this is what um, God really wants us to, to have. That ongoing relationship with Him. You know, when we, when we look at the Bible, it starts off with God speaking to Adam and Eve speaking to his children and the bible ends with god speaking to john <laughs> on the isle of patmos so from the beginning to the end god is speaking to his people you know it's really um ridiculous to say that god doesn't speak anymore let me say it again because i've heard this in in different quarters, let me say that in different places, I've heard people say God doesn't speak again. But how can we say that when we tell people to accept Jesus into their heart, and when they do that, they can have a personal relationship with him, but he doesn't speak to you? How can you have a personal relationship with someone and they don't speak to you. Amen. It's like, you know, God made Adam and Eve and, um, you know, and just say, hey, 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 this is a book of instructions. You read it and figure it out. <laughs> I mean, I'm not belittling the word of God. We need the word of God. But it, it only comes alive to us when we hear his voice. Let me say it again. It becomes a life. To, it becomes the living word when we, when we hear his voice along with his written word. That is what gives us revelation knowledge. Amen. We need to hear the voice of God. And we can all hear his voice. Amen. It's more than just an instruction manual that we need. You know, I remember, I think it was, I think it was last year, two years, or it may have been last year, yeah, last year, I think it was, where, um, you know, we did the front, was it that last year or two years ago? Maybe a year ago, it's like a year ago, we did the front, and we you know we got some offices up there, and um, I needed a desk and a, 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 a bookshelf. So we went down to courts and stuff, and we saw a, a desk that I liked and, and a bookshelf. I was like, wow, I like this. And then the was with me. So we say, uh, we're going we're gonna to take this. We was like, we, we, um, so we, we, we can get a, so we spoke to one of the salespeople, and we said, okay, we want the, the desk and this, this bookshelf that goes along with it. So she said, great. Um, and so we said, when, we, when can we come and pick it up, or do you guys get someone to drop it for you? They said, um, no, we... What we do is that it comes in a box. I was like, what? I was like, I know it all. I, 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 I understood it. They all come in a box. But can I get this one that's already built up? Right? She said, no, it, it doesn't work like that. You know, what you'll have to do is if you, if you take it in a box, you'll have to pay a little extra and someone will come and help you build it up. And I said all I had to say this. 
If I had just gotten the instruction manual and built it up myself, I would still be building that desk and, work, and, 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 and bookshelf. For sure. Because I'll have to put it up, take it back down. Put it up, take it back down. How much you guys write? You guys laughing at me, but hear this. Look at this. How much you guys ever tried to build something on your own and you realize a few screws was left? Come on, right? So I'm not alone. You don't, do don't just laugh at Pastor Kirk. All right? So, so, so what I'm saying, you know what? I, I paid a little extra so I can get a helper. And this is what God did. Jesus said, I'm, I'm going to give you a helper. And that's the Holy Spirit who comes into our lives and speaks to us and it brings the manual alive. You see? So this is why God wants to speak to us. Amen? He wants us to have a relationship. Say relationship. And this is what I want to talk about today. And we will look at three points concerning a relationship that allows us to know his voice. Let me say it again. A relationship that allows us to know his voice. So point number one is this is our highest priority. Our highest priority is to have a relationship. Look at Genesis chapter 3, and let's look at verse 8. It says here, And, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves. I want you guys to see this. Hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees in the garden. This has never happened before. And why? Why did they hid themselves from the song of his voice? Sin. When sin came into their lives, they hid themselves from the voice of God. They were never afraid of the voice of God before they sinned. Isn't that interesting? And I've seen that too, even in the lives of people, when sin comes into their life, is when we don't see them. Come on. Why? Because for some reason, it, it, it's, it, it, it puts fear into you that causes you to retreat from his voice. So this is why it's so important for us, really, let me put it, don't play with sin. Because when you play with sin, when you get into sin, it separates you from what you would design to do, which was to hear his voice. Amen? Man was created to walk and talk with him. We just didn't get a book, amen, just to figure things out. You guys remember the song in the garden? And he walks with me and he... Right? You guys know the song. I remember one time a little boy who was in church one time listening to this song and he was telling his mom, 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 mom. And his mom said, what's up? What's up? He said, who is Andy? She said, well, who you mean Andy? He said, I just hear him say, and he walks with me and he talks. Okay. That was for you, Aaron. <laughs> okay. So this is why Jesus came back. Amen. He came to restore us back to the, that kind of close relationship with God that mankind had before. You know, let me be honest. I can, I can teach, I can teach you. I can give you methods on hearing God's voice. 
but I cannot develop a personal relationship with God for you. Let me say that again. I can teach you. I can, I can give you methods like what I've been doing for the past four weeks about how we can hear his voice. But there's one thing I cannot do for you is develop a personal relationship with God. You have to do that for yourself. Amen? You have to come to that place where you know his voice. You know, if, if, if I pick up the phone and Indira's on the other end, and I, I say, who, who is this? And she say, Indira, and I say, Indira who? <laughs> yeah, 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 you know. It's going to be a rough night. Okay? Why? Because by now, because of our, our, our close relationship, I should know the sound of her voice. And, that, and, and you guys, you guys, that has happened to every one of us here. I mean, how many times have you picked up a phone, someone spoke to you, and you did not recognize their voice? And most of the time, that happens because it's not someone that you're familiar with. It's not someone that you hear their voice on a regular basis. So you, you, you didn't recognize the sound of that person's voice. But if, but if it's someone that you know, like if, if, if Hosea calls me or, 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 or Antonio, immediately I know their voice because I've spent so much time with them, I recognize their voice. So it's the same thing if God was to come and say, hey, Jim, you should say, hey. Hey, Lord. Why? Because you recognize his voice. But this only comes to us through relationship. Say relationship. We must develop a relationship on our own. And this must become our highest priority. I'm going to say that again. Our highest priority as, as, as God's people is to develop a relationship with Him. So this leads me to my second point. And it's this. Our relationship with God must become our highest pursuit. We must go after it. Amen? What caused the sin that we just spoke about with Adam and Eve? I want us to look at that. You see, guys, there were, there were two trees in the garden. All right? The tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right? And God... God had told them, you can eat of every other tree, actually, of the garden, but this tree, what did he say? This tree of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. He what? He said it. He said it. Why? Because God never designed us to live by choosing between good and evil. He designed us to live by what he said. I'm going to say that again. God did not design us to live by choosing between good and evil. He designed us to live by his voice. He told them not to eat. He used his voice. <laughs> Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He, wa he never wanted us to judge what is good and bad. He wanted us to look at what is good and what is God? Because it could be good, but not God. I want you to, I want that to sink. 
It could be good, but not God. It's like I shared my testimony. It was Friday night. You know, we had a great time in Kingdom Dreamers. Man, what a time. What a time. And one of the things that I shared in Kingdom Dreamers was, 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 was my dream that I had as a young kid of becoming a professional cricketer. Is that a bad thing? No. It's a good thing, but it came to a point in my life where it was not a God thing. You see? And how did I know that it was not a God thing? Is because I heard his voice. And his voice told me it's time for you to go to Bible college. So I knew then, even though the cricket pursuit was good, but at that season in my life, it wasn't God anymore. Amen? So this is why we need to hear the voice of God. Because had I continued doing what was good, I would not be standing here this morning. And many other things may not have happened. I would not have had a beautiful wife. I'm making up. You see, but it's true. When you start to do what God requires you to do by you hearing his voice, you will get what God wants you to have. And this is a part of my notes, but I'm going to say it right now. The, 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 the biggest challenge to us to having God's best is for you doing just what's good. Because good can become the greatest hindrance to what's best. So this is why we need to hear the voice of God. This is why we need to recognize when God is speaking to us so that we can do what He wants, so we can have what He wants us to have, which is His best. But that only comes through relationship. Amen? You see, good could be bad if it's not God. You see, let me say this. God gave us something when we sin called conscience. And it tells us what's good and evil. Amen? But... That conscience that we have was not designed for us to live by. He gave us that conscience to know what's right and wrong so it can lead us to Him. Let me show you the scripture Hebrews 9, verse 14. And this is what it says it says, How much more. Shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God, cleanse our what? Cleanse our what? Our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. You see, only a pure conscience that's cleansed in the blood of Jesus can cause us to live for God. Because if that conscience is not cleansed, it could still make you do things that are good and not God. That conscience would lead us to God. And when it leads us to God, we get His grace... And that grace now positions us to hear his voice. Let me tell you why it's important to have a pure conscience that's cleansed. Because I know a lot of people, and you might know some too, who think... When they do bad stuff, they can do some good stuff to make them feel good about the bad stuff they did. 
I know a lot of people like that. So they do bad stuff, and it messes with their conscience. So they go and do good stuff to ease their conscience. So it becomes a cycle. I do bad, so I have to do some good. I do bad, so I have to do some good. I do bad, so I have to do some good. And the bad stuff never stops happening. But what they should have done is allow their conscience to cause them to go to God, which will lead them to repentance. The grace of God comes now into their life and that empowers them to stop doing bad. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 19. It says, having what? Having faith. Having faith and a good conscience. Which some have been rejected considering the faith have suffered shipwreck. You see, having a conscience is not enough. You must have faith with a good conscience. Why? Because how does faith come? Faith comes by what? Faith comes by what? Faith comes from hearing. And how do we hear when we go to Him and have a relationship? We need to hear. Then we can have faith, and that faith, when it adds now to the good conscience, that's how we serve God. We must hear his voice. We must hear his voice so we can have faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please him. So this is how important it is for us to hear his voice. That's like, let me look at that. Let me, let me show you that scripture. Romans 10, very familiar. Romans 10, verse 17. For, so then faith comes by, and if you didn't hear, by hearing and hearing. <laughs> by the word of God. Amen? When we hear his voice, when we hear the words that come from his voice, that is what causes faith to arise. And we add that faith to our conscience. Amen? Living by hearing the voice of God will cause us to have a clean conscience. I'm going to say that again. Living by hearing the voice of God will cause us to have a clean conscience. You see, some people will say, I will do nothing to violate my conscience. But what if God tells you? I'll be honest with you. I mean, I'll go, I'm going to go back to that testimony, but I'll show you some scriptural evidence. When God first told me to go to Bible school, it violated my conscience. It did, because I really love cricket. I used to sleep with a cricket bat. I'll be honest with you. I slept with a cricket bat next to my bed. And I fought it for two years. It violated my con he violated my conscience for two years. Plus, this is the next part of the story. I didn't tell you. I, did, I probably did, but I'll tell you again. My girlfriend at the time, she said, I will never marry a pastor. Conscience. Because she was a good girl. She was the, like, the, the, the lead worship leader in our church there in Belmont. A nice girl. So that was in my mind. And God was violating my conscience. Yes, God can violate your conscience. Show me that in the Bible, Pastor Cook. Thanks for asking. <laughs> How much of you guys have kids? What if God one day, I know he, he won't, he won't, but let us say 
he did want to say, I want you to give your kid up. I want you to go sacrifice your kid to me. Wouldn't that violate your conscience? It would. But that is what came to Abraham. God came to Abraham one day and said, Hey, I want you to give me your, your child as a sacrifice. Isaac. That would have violated my conscience. <laughs> Knowing that I believed for him for 25 years. And it was a promise from God. Let me show you another one. This one is interesting too. Look at Acts chapter 10. <laughs> this is funny, guys. As I know. It says the next day, this is about, this, about Peter, right? It says the, and the next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up to the house top to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry, like Pastor Kirk, and wanted. Oh, that's not there? Anyhow. <laughs> and he became very hungry and wanted to. That's what you do when you get hungry. And while they made ready, he fell into a trance. This is like what happened with Yanni this week. He fell into a trance and saw heaven open and an object like a great sheet bonged at the four corners descending to him and led down to the earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth. Wild beasts, goat, duck. I mean, you name it. Curry. I mean, sorry. <laughs> Wild beasts. <laughs> Creeping things. Birds of the air. And a what? Voice. A what? Voice. A voice. See, hearing God. Hearing his voice. A voice came to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. Look at Peter's response. And Peter said, no, uh, uh, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And the what? And the what? The voice. The voice spoke to him again. The second time, what God has cleansed, you must not call common. And this was done three times. <laughs> and the object was taken up into heaven again. So there is the great apostle Peter who knew his voice. And God had to tell him how much times? Why? Because it was violating his conscience. Because he, he was a devout Jew. And he never ate stuff like that. So, this came to me. Because we have a devout, we had, sorry, not a devout. We have a guy here, I'm not going to call his name, but you know, he came from a religious persuasion that didn't eat a particular animal. That animal that makes Christmas so great. That animal that causes us to harmonize. <laughs> but boy, that fella, ham, ham. <laughs> and you know, because he was willing to, 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 to obey God. And eat all manner of beasts. <laughs> See? You guys want to know who it is, huh? You guys really want to know who it is? I'll give you a hint. He still kind of looks like, anyway, okay. <laughs> you figure it out. You guys want another hint? Yeah, 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 we saw him this morning. And, okay. I really gave it away. All right. It was who? 
Mark, you see, he's practicing his word of knowledge. You see, Lil Avia, let's got a prophetic word who it was. <laughs> so we see, it is so important to hear his voice. Because sometimes he will ask us to do things or, or stop us from doing things that are good. That are good. And it might even violate our conscience, but we need to live by his voice. Amen. Point number three, last point. It must be our highest passion. So it must be our priority. It must be our greatest pursuit, but it must be our highest passion. Look at Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. Very familiar um, story. It says, Now it happened as they went that he, this is Jesus, entered a certain village and a certain woman named what? Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' what? And what? His voice. She sat at his feet and what? She sat at his feet and what? Heard his voice. Right? But Martha was distracted. <laughs> With much serving. Is serving a good thing? It is. It could be good, but it doesn't have to be God. Right? She was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care? How much of us have been there? <laughs> I've been there, right? Do you not care that my sister have left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled. How much have you been there? Worried and troubled. <laughs> you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing. Say one thing. One thing. Is needed. Just one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen the good path. What's the good part? To sit at his feet and hear his voice. Sit at his feet and hear his voice, and which will not be taken away from her. The one thing that is needed, our highest passion. It must be to sit at his feet and hear his voice. That's why we talked about last week. Make that appointment. Don't miss that appointment because a misappointment becomes a disappointment. This must be our number one passion. To make that appointment, to sit at his feet and hear his words. We all have to get to this place, guys. This is the place. This is our time to walk and talk with him. This is our time to meet him in the cool of the evening like he did with Adam, Adam and Eve. Let me say this, guys. Your pastor is not the one to always hear God for you. Can I say it again? Your pastor, you may be visiting this morning from another church. Your pastor is not the one to always hear God for you. I'm here to hear God with you. I'm here mainly to confirm what you are hearing or what you should be hearing. Amen. Amen. This is something we have to do. And we see this. You know, let's, let's look at one our last scripture this morning. And this is the, the, the people of Israel and, 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 and with Moses. It says, now all, say all. All the people 
witness the thunderings and lightning flashes, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, who saw it? The people, they trembled and stood how? Afar off. They stood afar off. Then they said to who? Pastor Moses. <laughs> They said to Pastor Moses, you speak with us and we will hear. But let not God speak with us lest we die. And Moses said to the people, do not fear. And this is what I'm going to tell you guys this morning. Don't fear his voice. Do not fear. For God has come to test you. He has come to test us. And that his fear may be before you so that you may not sin. So the people how? Still stood afar off. But look at this. Moses drew near the thick darkness where God was. Moses chose to go and sit at his feet so he can hear his voice. When God's desire was for everyone to come up the mountain, everyone to make that appointment to hear his voice. He wants to speak to all of us. We are called his sheep, and his sheep knows his voice. God wants to speak to us. And, it, and let me tell you something, it's not just for the pastors or the spiritual leaders to hear God's voice. Look, they, 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 were, they were simply praying. It, it, was it a Wednesday? A Wednesday evening here, this praying, pressing in for more of God. And God spoke to each one of them. Look, even Q, who, or, 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 or percussionist, she, heard, she, she says that God was saying someone had a pain in her shoulder. And it was for me. <laughs> it was for me. I'm telling up to last night, asking, yeah, did my, 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 my shoulder was hurting me. It started back again. I was like, and now, I don't know, it, like it's gone, praise God. Actually, that Wednesday, it was difficult for me to get my hand up like that. It was so much pain in my, in my shoulder. I think for the past few days, Indira's been massaging, and the, but now it's gone. <laughs> and that word, and that word came to, to, to cue, the precaution is. Is that apostle, prophet, evangelist cue? She has blown here. <laughs> God wants to speak to all of us. Whether you have blown here, black here, whether you have no here. Amen. <laughs> he doesn't care what you hear. He wants you to hear his voice. <laughs> Amen. He wants to speak to all of us. Let's stand. Hallelujah.